Greetings everyone and thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring an iconic wood-framed Waddle & Daub Tudor Manor home located along the walk in the suburb of Speak out of Liverpool, England, that's widely recognized as one of the finest surviving examples of structures of its type in existence, and that's owned under the National Trust as a Grade 1 listed building. Rumored to harbor a range of ghostly manifestations tied to its ridiculously lengthy past, are you sure you're ready to brave the history and hauntings of Speak Hall? Historically, in 1524 and on lands that now accommodate Speak Hall, one Sir William Norris would inherit a medieval crook-beamed hall that had previously been utilized by his ancestors in as early as 1314, after which he would construct the Speak Hall we know today as a spacious Great Hall. From 1540 to 1570, the hall's southern wing would welcome several expansions. From 1546 to 47, its western wing was constructed, and in 1598, the premises would welcome one final significant change in the form of the addition of its northern range under Edward Norris, after which only minor alterations would transpire across the hall and its gardens. Now, as a refresher for our many fellow American viewers who aren't polished up on their European histories, the Reformation was a major movement through 16th century Europe during which time the Church of England broke away from the authority of the Pope, resulting in all manner of political and religious turmoil that in turn resulted in a number of significant events that shaped Christianity as a whole. Through the Reformation, the Norrises would remain devout Roman Catholics, resulting in their residents sporting priest holes which were literally hiding spots for priests when the law came a-knockin', and an observation hole in the chimney, which allowed for someone within the adjacent bedroom to view the house's approach and to warn its inhabitants should any unsavory type show up. For generations, this prestigious old property would remain in Norris family hands until 1736 when heiress Mary Norris married Lord Sidney Beauclerk, and following her passing in 1766, it would be leased out to various tenants. In 1795, the site would be purchased from the Beauclerks from Liverpool merchant Richard Watt. In 1878, 21-year-old heiress Miss Adelaide Watt would return to her family property, and following her passing in 1921, the estate would be left in trust for 21 years, during which time it was looked after by Thomas Wattmore, who'd actually acted as a butler to Miss Watt. In 1943, Speak Hall was acquired under the National Trust. From 1946 to 1974, it was administered under the Liverpool City Corporation, after which it was passed to the Merseyside County Council, who would see through seven years of structural repairs and restorations, which wouldn't conclude until 1983, and in 1986, the National Trust would assume full management of the property. Speak Hall remains open into the present, offering a range of educational materials and displays, touring options, a gift shop, its legendary gardens, and much, much more. Fitting the bill is your classic haunted manor home, long-standing local legends, some of which span back centuries, tell of encounters with the paranormal on site, and both staff and guests, to Speak's bounds, have reported extreme cold spots felt in adverse weather or within temperature-controlled rooms, random bouts of nausea experienced often in the Great Hall, and encounters with shadowy manifestations that stalk the living at a distance. Phantom footsteps are often detected through the upper corridors, even through the dead of night and when no one else is around, while those who have frequented the Blue Room have told of an ominous presence that makes visitors feel unwelcome, and that's even been known to so much as whisper, get out, threateningly, when spotted lurking in the dark. Several informal investigations of Speak have yielded high EMF levels and strange fluctuations, chilling EVPs, and orbs and odd silhouettes in photography and video, while others tell of doors opening and closing on their own, of objects spied moving about inexplicably, and of the ghostly sounds of children heard crying from empty spaces. By far the most famous Speak legend surrounds an entity recognized as the Grey Lady, who it's believed is the manifestation of the aforementioned Mary Norris. As this fable tells it, in life, Mary fell into a deep depression and anxiety surrounding her husband's gambling problems and mounting debts, and in desperation, ended up throwing their young son out of the tapestry room window to meet his death in the murky moat waters below, just before throwing herself out to share in the same fate. While as to date, these tales are unfounded and considered to be exceedingly unlikely, this hasn't stopped accounts of encounters with a spirit believed to be Mary's, who's often sighted in the tapestry room, gliding across the floor before disappearing into the walls. The ghost of Mary has also been spied near the window, cradling her infant son, and has been known to rock children's cots on sight. 
Thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.